Hey everybody, it's Nathan Cool with NathanCoolPhoto.com and I want to give a two-part series on two of the most commonly asked questions that I've got that take us back to basics. One, what do I do about verticals and making sure that I don't get distortion? What do I do to prepare when I shoot? What do I do in post-processing to make sure that I've got as free of distortion as I could possibly have and also what are those verticals and how do we avoid them, how do we actually correct for it and how do we prepare for it. The second thing that I want to be able to show then also for the second most uh, commonly asked question is why am I shooting at ISO 320? Why don't I just shoot at ISO 100? I'm on a tripod. Well there's a very good reason for that and I want to be able to show that in the second part of this series. But for this first video that I'd like to show, let's take a look at the vertical situation. So what am I talking about when we talk about verticals? Verticals are those lines of verticalness that we have whenever you shoot a, uh, a building or a room or anything else. So normally if you look up at a building, you will see converging lines. Those lines will come together. That's natural. When you're using a wide angle lens for, for instance, real estate photography, that's going to be even more exaggerated. And it's a big no-no typically in real estate photography. If you're doing art, that's one thing. But if you're producing a product for somebody to actually sell their product, for instance, a real estate uh, MLS listing a house or even a building commercial real estate, got to get those verticals straight. So there's things you can do to prepare for it and things you can do to correct and post processing. Let's first take a look at what you do to prepare for it. Now what you want to make sure is that your camera is level. Not just this way, not just across the horizon, but also vertically. And that's what gets the verticals vertical. Now that will then dictate how high your tripod is. So for instance, I'm shooting this kitchen. This is my house. I use this in a lot of examples. And I want to be able to show some of the countertop. Not a lot of it, but some of the countertop. Now, I could use a tilt shift lens, and that's something also for another time. It's a very expensive way to go. This is the more economical and the more common way that you'll find, especially for MLS listings. Make sure that camera is level in two different axes. So first, using a D610, I can look through the viewfinder. I have a programmed button, and I can actually tell then if I'm level or not. Now, some of the uh, cameras also have a, uh, a virtual horizon that you can bring up on the back, and you want to make sure you're there. If you're shooting on a hardwood floor, it's not going to change that much throughout your shoot. Uh, if, once you go to carpet and other things, it will, so you kind of got to get that going. That's your horizontal axis, though. Got to have that right. But your vertical axis, that's a little bit harder. Um, you can get a little bubble level and you can put it on the top here um, and you can watch what's going on. What I do is I just look through the viewfinder and I look at those grid lines. So we all have those grid lines that we can see on our picture and I can see if those are lining up with the other vertical lines in the frame. So uh, the cabinets here, for instance, the wall edges, uh, those type of things, are they coming through very well? So. Uh, what I like to do is not just use those grid lines, but also the sides of the camera frame because something along the side is going to be vertical as well. So using all those, I get myself very close to doing that. So let's take a couple examples and we'll take them up into post-processing and see what I'm talking about. Also how to correct for it because I can never get verticals truly vertical. So let's first take a shot of exaggerating this. So let's go two different angles. Let's take a look down here. Let's say that I had my verticals. Oh, I want to show more of the floor, less of the ceiling. That'd be a good idea, right? Because I got hardwood floor in this. So I'm going to point my camera down to try to get that effect out of it. Now that's somewhat exaggerated. And of course, those verticals are way off and it looks somewhat like a fun house. But we can correct that. And I'm going to show that in post-processing. But first, let's take what would be another exaggerated picture, which would be looking up. And you see this quite a bit if you've been looking at uh, up at buildings. Now, this is, it may be an artistic view of the same type of funhouse shot, right? But that's still not acceptable either. This isn't something that we would want to deliver to a client. So the true verticals are as close to vertical that I'm going to get out of camera is where I line that up to where I have the camera basically then level in both axes. And then I fire my shot. Okay, now that's a lot closer. Now, I'm going to take all three of these into post-processing, and let's see how we have to deal with all these and what it means then for correcting in post what we couldn't do when we shot this. Ready? Let's go. All right, now let's take a look at what we can do post-process, and we've done everything we can to correct the verticals, but I'd like to also show you a couple little tricks, some other things you can do with some of the not-so-vertical pictures. Ready? Let's take a look deep inside, getting this thing all vertical. 
Okay, so what we have, if you remember right, we have a bad vertical one direction, we have a bad vertical the other direction, and we've got somewhat of a uh, regular standard vertical. Now the one thing on this, even though it looks pretty vertical, it's probably a little bit off, and I'll show you how to correct all that in just a second. But the one thing here is notice there is a lot of ceiling in this picture, not something you'd really want to showcase. So a couple things we can do with that later, and of course a tilt shift lens would be able to compensate for that. So I'm going to show you some of those tricks along the way. So this is our first one and really bad verticals. Well, how do you correct that? Well, it's easy enough in Lightroom. If you go down here to the lens correction over here on the right hand side, I'm, so I've scrolled down to lens correction. I can obviously enable my profile corrections. It brings out some of the distortion and video and get rid of the chromatic aberration if I have any. But the most important thing is this vertical button right here. Once you click that, it pretty much knows how to correct that in a vertical. And you can see the lines are really starting to, to line up. That looks good. Now, it might not work to its best favor, so you can also go into the manual mode here under lens correction. And there's a vertical slider. You place that over it and you can then see the grid and how that looks. Then you can just move the slider either direction and get the verticals the way that you want. Okay, so let's go on to the next picture too. Same thing here that we can do is uh, we can go over to the basic. Um, obviously my typical everything enable profile corrections, remove chromatic aberration and vertical and that corrected it as well. So we would do the same thing on this other picture and that would be fine um, if I did all these manual. I have, by the way, presets that do all this, and you've seen those in, in other videos. And I can correct the verticals, and sure enough, it was a little bit off, um, even though it's close as I got it. Now, I still don't like exactly what it's doing here. To me, that looks a little bit off, so I might go into manual and check it. And actually, that's just my eyes playing tricks on me. It does look vertical as I go across looking at the cabinets. Might be just a tad, so I could actually tweak it if I wanted to, but to me, that was probably just acceptable. But if I went a negative one, I thought that did a pretty good job of getting that. Now, a couple things here, though, to take note is, like I mentioned, there's a lot of ceiling in here. So if I didn't care about having all this picture for that in the frame, I could crop it down, you know, this direction. Say, you know what, that's pretty good. I don't need to show everything from the outside window. I just want to concentrate on the kitchen. And that's a, probably a pretty good shot. And then, of course, if I were to, you know, try to finish this off as a single exposure, I would be doing, you know, a whole bunch of other stuff to it, you know, to try to bring it up. And you've seen some of my presets that go in that. So that's not too bad of a picture. Um, obviously, we're going to be doing something a little bit more with this when we get to the next video in this two-part series to actually show the view outside and why we're using different ISO settings and what may seem obvious. So, let's go on to, though, our first one that we did um, that was very far off. So, as you recall, let's take this one back out to where it was. So, all that I had here was just some uh, lens exposure stuff. Remove the chromatic aberration and the uh, lens correction, that's fine. And then we went to the upright perspective. Look at that. There's not as much ceiling. There's another video uh, talk about this by a guy named Rich Baum, B-A-U-M. You find his videos online um, on real estate. You'll find a wealth of information. He calls this the fake tilt shift. And this actually does a pretty good job. Um, doesn't really throw a lot of distortion into it. But remember, any time you're twisting and contorting your picture, you're probably going to get a little distortion somewhere. And also, you are going to cut out some of the frame. So if you shoot wide enough, you shoot down at an angle, you can get this somewhat of a tilt shift type look. Look, I got rid of the ceiling, but I'm still showing just as much of the countertop there as I did in the picture where I tried to get all my upright uh, verticals, which was, excuse me, this picture here. So upright verticals uh, compared to kind of a fake tilt shift, um, not too bad, not too bad of a looking picture. We can go in and zoom real close, we can see some of the difference. You can notice up here where it says brown, and it might be kind of hard on this YouTube video to see that, but when we actually then bring that back out, um, we might get some of that, excuse me, I'm on the wrong picture here. If we uh, take that back out, and we would see then that uh, it might be actually just a little bit sharper when it, before we went into it, but the upright perspective didn't really change it that much. So it's actually quite acceptable. So doing the verticals adjustment in Lightroom it can get you really close. You can do a fake tilt shift, and also, once again, it never does it. So let's take a look at another one here. Um, we'll go back here to this particular one. I've got a preset, and you might see this in one of my other videos, uh, where I've called this, uh, it's my Takina 16-28, to 
and when I hit that, it does everything that I need to to do the lens correction. So I don't go through those manual steps. With one fell swoop and clicking that preset, it did my navel profile corrections, removed my chromatic aberration, and it did my verticals all at once. Um, I've even got where I, I do that on, for instance, a light bump sharp. Let's take another look at a preset. If I do this, it does that same preset and also with some adjustments that may get me close enough to a picture that might be uh, actually deliverable to a customer. Problem is, there's a lot of things wrong here that would make it undeliverable for my clients. There's way too much sheen on the floor. It's blown out completely over top of the windows. So we gotta get the view outside. There's a lot of things we still need to do to it. But for right now, this is what we're up against. Correcting some of those verticals where we actually had something that was way off, but we were able to correct that from it being far too tilted to something that was actually more vertical and more acceptable. So that's it for part one of two. On the next video coming up on this series, I'm gonna be showing why ISO matters and why you might think that, well, I'm on a tripod ISO 100, what's the big deal? Well, you're wondering why I shoot at ISO 320. I'm gonna show you that in more detail, but I'm gonna take it all a step further. One of the last things showed here was that we still have some problems. It's not a completely deliverable photo. You know that uh, if you've watched some of my other videos, I do what's called a flambient technique, where I'm using flash ambient, then I'm also gonna do the window pulls with it. So I'm gonna take it all in one fell swoop now to finish it up and show, yes, why I shoot at, shoot at ISO 320. I've got those verticals corrected, got my bases covered for all the basics that I'd wanna start moving through, and now let's take it all with the basics and through the final step of getting a finished product. And if you did like this video, by the way, you'll love the second one where I show this, but you can also subscribe to this YouTube channel. It doesn't cost anything, and as soon as one of these videos is posted, you'll be the first to know. And when the second video in this series comes online, you'll also be notified of that as well. Once again, thanks for a lot for watching, and until the next video, take care and get out there and shoot something.